Welcome back to the next and final part of our examination of the deeper understandings of anti-Semitism. Why the Jews? Up until now, we've looked at how anti-Semitism is unique. We looked at the reasons people give for anti-Semitism. We've seen that really they seem to be excuses, not real reasons. The question is, why does anti-Semitism exist? Now, I can give you my opinion. What I'd rather do is give you an insight into the opinion of really two sources, two sources that really are the most opposite sources that I could give you, but pretty incredibly come to the same conclusion. The first source is probably the greatest anti-Semite the world has ever seen, Adolf Hitler himself. You see, Hitler was evil, but he wasn't crazy. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, and he spelled it out before he was going to do it. In his book, Mein Kampf, which he wrote when he was in jail, he spelled out his battle against the Jews. In another book called Hitler Speaks, which is a collection of many of his private thoughts and things that he said in private about his plans for the Jews, in both of those books, he lays out exactly what he wanted to say and what, what he wanted to do. And what I want to show you now and go through in the next few minutes is looking at some of the quotes and ideas that Hitler said of why he hated the Jews. Again, these all come from either Mein Kampf or this book, Hitler Speaks. I've taught this many times. If you, I'm glad you made it with me this far, but now is really the time to pay attention because what you're about to see is pretty eye-opening. Hitler says, first of all, the idea that, look at this quote below, the struggle for world domination will be fought entirely between us, between Germans and Jews. All else is facade and illusion. Behind England stands Israel and behind France and behind the United States. Even when we have driven the Jew out of Germany, he remains our world enemy. It all comes down, Hitler said, to us and the Jews. And we know this is true. When the Germans were fighting the Russians and, and Hitler's uh, generals were telling him, we need more trains sent to the front lines to bring uh, the proper armaments and, and, and needs to our troops fighting against the Russians, Hitler said, no, send those trains filled of Jews to Auschwitz. That was his main purpose. That was his main agenda, was to fight the Jews. Hitler goes on and he says, do you now appreciate the depth of our national socialist movement? Can there be anything greater and more all comprehending? Those who see a national socialism, nothing more than a political movement, know scarcely anything of it. It is more even than a religion. It is the will to create mankind anew, to recreate mankind. What is Hitler talking about? So we're all familiar with the idea of Darwinism, survival of the fittest, evolution. How does the animal kingdom evolve? How does it, the idea of survival of the fittest, the strong continue, the weak get weeded out and evolution happens and, 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 and species evolve. There's such thing as social Darwinism that we can apply this idea of, so, of survival of the fittest to the human race. And that so too the human race, the stronger should survive, the stronger should continue, the weak should be weeded out. And that will also allow for the evolution of the human race to become stronger, to become better, to become more evolved. Hitler believed in social Darwinism. He believed in a crazy way of the evolution and the perfection of the Jewish, of the, sorry, of the, of humankind. Now, how are you going to do that? You do that by taking the race, the most pure race, the most, the strongest race, and you continue it, but you got to get rid of the weaker ones. It's survival of the fittest. Now, Hitler conveniently chose the Aryan race, the Germans, to be the ones that were the strongest. And that me meant that the other ones had to be getting rid of. But what does that do with the Jews? Why is that an eternal battle? Why is that an ultimate battle between the Germans and the Jews? So look at what Hitler says. They refer to me as an uneducated barbarian. Yes, we are barbarians. We want to be barbarians. It is an honorable title to us. We shall rejuvenate the world. The world is near its end. What does it mean to be a barbarian? A barbarian is not limited by morality, by rules, by you know, what people might think is the right thing to do. A barbarian just does what needs to be done for survival. And that's what Hitler was saying. Survival of the fittest, being like the animal kingdom, that might not be pretty, but that's what's needed. 
But again, what does this have to do with the Jews? So look at what Hitler says. Providence has ordained that I should be the greatest liberator of humanity. I am freeing man from the restraints of an intelligence that has taken charge, from the dirty and degrading self-mortifications of a false vision called conscience and morality, and from the demands of a freedom and personal independence, which only a very few can bear. I am freeing man from morality and conscience to get rid of the weak, to focus on survival of the fittest, to literally destroy, to kill those that are standing in our way, you have to be a barbarian. You have to get rid of morality and conscience. And look at what Hitler says. The 10 commandments have lost their validity. Conscience is a Jewish invention. It is a blemish like circumcision. Conscience is a Jewish invention. And now we start to understand to recreate mankind new, survival of fittest, evolution of humankind, you need to get rid of morality and conscience. We have to be like the animal kingdom. And who brought morality and conscience into this world, says Hitler? The Jewish people. Now you might think, okay, so maybe, you know, kill those Jews that are standing up there for morality and conscience, you know, those religious Jews or those rabbis or whatever it might be. We've talked about before, pre-Holocaust in the 1800s, 1900s in Germany, there was mass assimilation. So many Jews said, we don't stand for that stuff. But Hitler said we have to kill and eradicate every Jew. Why? Look at what he says. If only one country, for whatever reason, tolerates a Jewish family in it, that family will become the germ center for fresh sedition. If one little Jewish boy survives, and believe me, I think he meant Jewish girls as well. If one little Jewish boy survives without any Jewish education, with no synagogue and no Hebrew school, it's in his soul. It's in his soul. Every Jew, every Jew is a threat to, to Hitler's worldview because every Jew has in his soul that he represents this idea of morality and conscience. He goes on to say, even if there had never been a synagogue or a Jewish school or the Old Testament, the Jewish spirit would still exist and exert its influence. It has been there from the beginning and there is no Jew, not a single one, who does not personify it. Every Jew. You know, I've given this talk many times, and there's usually somebody in the audience who says, whoa, that actually makes me feel proud. <laughs> Pretty amazing idea, right? That we would need Hitler, the greatest anti semite in the world, to tell us what we stand for. But he's teaching us. The Jewish people are my ultimate enemy because my enemy is morality and conscience, and that is what the Jewish people stand for. Now, I mentioned the beginning of this segment, but I'm going to show you two sources. One source is Hitler, and I said of another source that's really the opposite source, but comes to the same conclusion. And that source is our Jewish wisdom, the Torah itself. The Torah in the Talmud asked the question, why was the Torah given on a mountain called Sinai? Sinai in Hebrew. We believe the Torah was given on this mountain. Why was it called Sinai? So there's a certain tradition that says that the mountain Sinai was the shortest mountain. It was the lowest mountain. And the rabbis teach us what this is, is teaching us a piece of wisdom, that the lowest mountain re represents humility. That if a person wants to gain wisdom in life, which is what the Torah is, if a person wants to gain wisdom, we have to have humility. If you think you know everything already, you're never going to be able to learn something new. But humility, if we believe, okay, we know something, but we don't know everything, you're always looking to gain more wisdom. That's one answer that's given. The Talmud gives another answer though. And it says that the Torah was given on a mountain called Sinai because another word in Hebrew spelled differently, but sounds very similar to the word Sinai. And that word is Sina. Sina meaning hatred. Sinai, Sina. The Torah was given on Sinai because of the Sina the hatred that was going to come out of it. What does that mean? So the rabbis explain, what is the Torah? What is Judaism? What was given on Mount Sinai was this idea of morality and conscience. This idea that Hitler was talking about, values of the Torah were brought into the world. And there's only two ways that a person can deal with that. Either they can say, wow, that's amazing. I want to embrace that. I want to bring morality and conscience into the world. Or the other way is a person says, whoa, 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 whoa. 
that's going to, you know, cause some real uh, issues, right? Now I, I have to, uh, you know, not just do what I want, act how I want. I'm restrained by morality, conscience. And so it's rejected. But you know what? Nobody can wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I think today I'm going to be immoral. It doesn't work. Even Hitler couldn't say that, right? So what do you do? You can't fight the message. You fight the messenger. You say to those Jews, all they want is control and power. Those Jews killed Jesus. Those Jews think they're better than everyone else. Those Jews, you know, are different. They dress differently. You go after the messenger. The hatred was brought out when the Torah was given because this, this, this negative response, we don't want that morality and conscience. You fight the messenger. And this was really, according to the Torah, according to the Talmud, the reason for anti-Semitism is that every single one of us, every individual, Jew and non-Jew, we all have within us the ability to wake up one day and say, of course, I want to be great. I want to have morality. I want to be good. I want to make the world a better place. And we all have within us a certain part that says, you know what? I just want to do my own thing. Don't put, give me your rules. Don't give me your, you know, uh, uh, these, these restrictions. And we rebel. And ultimately on a national level, this rebellion is the rebellion against the Jewish people because the Jewish people stand for these ideas of morality and conscience. That's what the Talmud is teaching us. And that's what Adolf Hitler said. So again, take it or leave it. There could be other theories why anti-Semitism exists, but this is what Hitler said. This is what the Talmud says. And it's pretty amazing that these two disparate sources really say the same thing. You know, I'm going to finish just with this last slide. Nietzsche said that any human being, a human being, I'm sorry, can survive any how as long as he has the proper why. For so many Jews, when anti-Semitism happens, we don't know what to do. It can be scary. It can be, we don't wanna be singled out. We don't wanna be uh, uh, people pointing fingers at us. And so for many Jews, we hide our Judaism, right? Why should I stick out? Why should I be different? Why No one wants to have hatred aimed at them. And, and you know what, in certain ways that might make sense. You know, if my kid came home from school and the bully was, uh, you know, making fun of him and the bully was, you know, I don't know, making fun of how he dressed or how he his haircut. You know, I'd say, listen, of course you should be proud of who you are, but maybe there's certain things you want to adjust because those things don't mean anything. It's, it doesn't make sense to get picked on, you know, because uh, you, you wore a green shirt to school. But what if that shirt was passed down from your parents, your grandparents? It meant something. It had real meaning to it. Your teacher, child would say, listen, this means something. This is something that we have to stand up for. And so this is what Nietzsche is saying. If you have the proper why, then you can understand anyhow. If we understand, at least according to these theories that we put forth, that anti-Semitism is because of what we stand for. It's not random. It's not just because we happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's not because we're rich and powerful, all these superficial things. But it's because we stand for something deeper. That's a why that we can withstand anyhow. And we can recognize, yes, when anti-Semitism comes, of course, we have to defend ourselves. Of course, we have to be careful. Of course, we have to go to the authorities. We have to lobby. We have to do all these things. But we also have to be proud of who we are. And that proud is not a superficial pride. It's a pride of really what the Jewish people represent in this world, this idea of morality and equality. Thank you so much for joining me for this series. Love you to check out more on H.com about anti-Semitism and other topics and wishing uh, you the best in, 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 in this exploration of understanding what makes the Jewish people unique. Have a good night.